Why do people suddenly sort of wake up one day with the visual snow in their vision? And others will describe to us that it started with a mild sense that there was something going on in their vision, sort of movement. And then by several months or even weeks or days, they had the full spectrum of visual snow. We don't understand exactly why that happens. So why there isn't an, an on-off switch in some people versus a slow progression and then stabilization in others. We can hypothesize understanding um, how the brain works and understanding synapses in the brain, which are connections between two nerves, and understanding how the brain modulates itself. But right now, that would all be hypothesis-based. Um, but really, when it comes to how the brain works, we have a lot of other knowledge that we can use to apply to VSS, and that's one very important piece of information that allows us to see if we came with a hypothesis. And I can give you an example. If we have a hypothesis that it is related to synapses talking to each other, so one nerve talking to another, and those synapses are regulated by gates, and through those gates um, enter things like potassium, sodium, calcium. And we think of a gate as being leaky and not allowing the proper movement of potassium, calcium, and other uh, type of neurotransmitters moving properly between those gates. We can imagine that at one instant, someone may have a fault in their gait that is sudden and severe as to create the visual snow syndrome, whereas somebody else might have a leaky gait that slowly changes over time. So that would just be one application of a theory. But we ha anytime we're applying theories for our understanding of visual snow syndrome, we have to keep that in mind, that some people develop it slowly, other people suddenly, and say to ourselves, here's a theory for VSS. Will it withstand the idea that it can happen suddenly? And will it withstand the idea that it can happen slowly? So those are the types of our observations that are very important for us to hear in the research community from our patients so that any theory that we present or try to explore will be able to explain all types of onset of visual snow syndrome. So it's really an excellent question.